first met Emily, her style was singer-songwriter, sad, slow, acoustic. But her new stuff just hits a slap in the face. She's battled a lot of demons. Everyone has a dark side. It's pretty mind-blowing that I'm still here. I've always been super attracted to the guitar. Like everything about it, my hand was kind of made for that. You know, like when I put my hands on a guitar, it just makes sense. Ever since I was little, you know, it's been like my secret thing. Have you ever played here before? No, not, not outside. Me neither. I'm about to rip it yeah, apart though. It, it happens like three or four songs in the set. I'll close my eyes and the light hits my eyelids. It feels like whatever gave me my talent is shining on me. And for some reason, it looks like Stevie Ray Vaughan. My ultimate dream would be to leave a legacy, you know? I want to live forever and to be known for adding something good to people's lives. Anything that I do focus on, it's so intense have such an addictive personality like that, so it does make sense that I fell into an addiction. But I never thought alcohol would be that addiction. I knew that I wanted to be a musician, but my life was holding me back from that, and I felt so stuck. Going down in flames because I drank my inhibitions all away, and all the things we've gotten over, they tapped me on the shoulder. So honey, won't you pour it down the drain? Looking back, this is a very depressed person. It's weird because I was ashamed of it, but I also felt like it was what I was supposed to do. I mean, I have a poster of Ryan Adams right there, and it's even more crazy that I used to do this, but I used to actually raise a shot glass when I was alone to that poster, you know, because I thought that it was the way to be a badass musician. In this weird business, it's like you have to be both super egotistical and insecure at the same time, which just makes for people. It was such a just black hole. My whole mentality was focused on, when am I gonna get this next drink? One day I just woke up so confused. She looked like she had never seen me, ever. She was convulsing and her eyes were rolled in the back of her head and foam was coming out of her mouth. I freaked out. EMS showed up, firefighters showed up, cops showed up. It was terrible. I had some seizures in my CAT scan. Like in the machine, I had a seizure because there was blood in my brain. I got a call, I think from her mom, saying that they were having to do emergency brain surgery because the blood had moved. They had to go in and drain the blood that was uh, on top of my brain um, from my seizures. It was the first time that I laid it out all on the table and said, if you don't stop drinking, I can't be with you anymore. And I said, I know, I need some help. And so a couple of days after that, I went to rehab. When she first got sober, there was about six months where she didn't write. She would still play music, but she had writer's block. I could just tell that it was eating her alive. I mean, there were times when I didn't even feel like I was worthy enough to touch my guitar because I felt like I had betrayed it. I was afraid that I wouldn't have any creative flow, that my brain or my mind and my insecurities would stop that creativity from coming out of me. When in reality, it did just the opposite. My songwriting process before I got sober was very emotional and very messy. I've been chasing love I don't know how to describe it, but it wasn't rock like it is today. And then Out of Blues came out of left field. Why don't you give me all your demons? Why don't you tell me how to feel? So I got a feeling that you're leaving. There's a part of your appeal, baby. Out of Blues is the first song that I wrote 
completely sober. The title means it's okay to feel. It's okay to have the blues. There's danger in what she does. It's not like she stopped drinking and, and just softened up and became, you know, air supply or something. It was an illusion that alcohol was the catalyst to bringing my creativity out of me. Now, like, I can sit down and I can have a calculated approach to it. Emily will never stop. She'll never stop playing music. She'll never stop reaching for the next thing. I want to be the core of a new genre. I daydream about my ambitions and my goals, and sometimes I do wonder if my ambitions are too big, but I've always wanted to leave a legacy that's undeniable. Do you know an uncharted musician whose music deserves to be shared with the world? Email artists at whoisuncharted 